So what's your purpose of searching the scriptures? John chapter 5, 39 and 40. Man, he's, he's whew. He, he came in. You search the scriptures. I'm not doubting that. So you just got to just read the word of God to go right through. You said, you search the scriptures. I'm not doubting that. For in them, you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. You search it. You search it for some reason. Someone told you that if I if I search the scripture, then A plus B plus C plus D all the way to Z is going to happen. And that's where you were stuck. Oh, come on now. Are you searching it to see G's? Are you searching it for what are you searching to get out of it? But you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. How does searching the scriptures not equal to 40? That's what threw me off when I was preparing for this. Because you would think if I'm going to search it, then I'm going to try to find Jesus in them. Ah, ah, ah. So I just stopped by to ask you a question. Many misunderstand it. Are you one of those? Many misunderstand it. Are you one of those? Because I sit there and I talk to folks I'm like, how did you not see that? How could you not catch that? Many misunderstand it. Are you one of those? They do not know what it says or why it is written. If you was asked the folk in your inner circle, why was the Bible written? And what does the Bible really say? And most folk, what I'm starting to realize is they will talk about it. They won't talk from it. They'll talk about it. Oh, you know what the Bible says. Something over there. Some, somewhere over there. You know what the Bible. Oh, you know what Bible. Wow. So Wednesday was powerful because we have to change it. How was such a low view of that? How, where did this low view of the Bible come from? We just say, oh, you know, you know that book. You know that, that, that Bible book. You know, it's somewhere in there. So we, we talk like this. So I got to ask myself, how do I get people to truly understand of what it means of hooking up from last week's message to this week? And according to Jesus Christ, the purpose of the scriptures is to point to him and reveal him. No hidden agendas. That's why he would say what he said in the Old Testament and what he said in the New Testament. If you've seen the Father, you've seen me. And it kept messing up the Jews. It's messing up. These were folk who knew the scriptures. But they didn't know Jesus. And brother, I'm here to tell you, there's quite a few po folk who pray, who read the scripture, and yet they don't know Jesus. So my goal is to figure out how can that happen? And who sits in Centennial and hears me preach about Jesus and walks out of here and then never mention Jesus again until they hear me preach about it again on Sunday? I, I asked myself one day how many times I talk about Jesus throughout the day and it's scary when you start really thinking about it versus folk who say the man upstairs, you know the big man, you know the good man. They'll say everything but the name of Jesus. And guess what we learned in those scriptures? No other name. So why do you keep saying every other name of Jesus? No other name. Big man, I don't know who you're talking about. You're talking about Pop Supper? You're talking about who you're talking about? The big man up there. I I'm not going to let you get away with that anymore. Jesus. If it's personal, you're not going to say the big man. You're not going to throw confusion. You don't look at the big man. I don't know what you're talking about. I will you say Jesus, I know what you're talking about. So I'm going to bring some clarity and pray that we quit using all this stuff and start talking, quit talking like the world and walking different from the world. Verse 39. It is interesting because when you search, you search the scriptures for in them, for in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. So the first thing I'm going to ask you in verse 39. How do you see Jesus? 
And brothers, I, man, how you start asking these questions? I said, Lord, I, how do I make that? I said, I can just keep saying the same thing over there. You are, because I got to get them to get this. Because I'm like, dang, I thought we were talking about this. No, they don't get it. You got. You can't just think that you can say it one time. So we right back here again. So how do you see Jesus? And then I'm going to ask you, like the Catholics, I'm going to call it out. Is he just Mary's son to you? You don't call Catholic, but is he just Mary's son to you? Come on now. It's crazy. <laughs> I don't know. How do you view him? Is he just Mary's son? Can he give you eternal life? That was in there. Is that all you're thinking about? I'm not going to do I don't want heaven down here because heaven's up there. So I'm going to live dirty and do whatever the hell I want to do down here. But I'm going to heaven. Come on, brothers and sisters. Don't get quiet on me. I'm going to do whatever I'm going to I'm going to do all. I'm just going to live it up. But I'm going to, but I want eternal life. I don't, Lord, don't mess with me down here. I want to, I, I know I'm going to eternal life, but I don't want anything that I do down here to look like eternal life. Ouch. Ouch. I'm reading it. You read it with me in 39. Amen. Is that all you? Well, I'm going to heaven. That's what your folks say. That's eternal life. I'm going to heaven. Well, you think I see some, some fruits of it down here. You're talking about you going to a place that you don't want no fruits down here. I laughed yesterday because God gave me the analogy. So we always laugh and cut up in our house. So Kalisha will say this. She'll say, Daddy, I want you to pick out the grapes because, man, I eat a pound of grapes by walking through the thing, make sure they're good. You know, I, I got to make sure. So I'm laughing. And Colette will never do this. So Colette brings the grapes home yesterday. And I think this is so awesome. And so I'm trying and thinking. She said, they're good, aren't they? I said, oh, oh, oh. But what did you do? She said, oh, I ate one or two. I don't now she gonna clear it up. I didn't do like you eat you eat a whole half of stock to make sure you right. I just ate one or two. I get it, I laugh, but come on, sometimes I oh try the fruit bad fruit. Come on, and I ain't gonna get it. Now if I eat the whole bag, that's still you know, but I eat two or three. I eat two or three because I gotta make sure because sometimes I'm gonna make sometimes one to trick you. You get that one grape and you get home and say, man, that grape, that grape tricked me in the store, so I'm learning these four or five. Oh, this is a good badge, and I go home. Can you see it? Try the fruit better. Come on now. You got to somewhere you can't keep saying I'm going to heaven, and I don't see no anything down here that looks like heaven. Can you see that? So folks say this. Then I go and I say, do you really believe on him? Because sometimes I got, do you really, out of the song today, do you really believe on him? I don't know. You tell me that, but there's no action that you really believe on him. You, the, His resume is telling me his head's all this, but there's, when I look at your life, you get mad at me for judging you, but I don't see that you really believe on him. I see that you believe in your job. I see that you believe in each other. I see that you believe on this. I see, But I don't see you believing in him. Quiet again. Do you believe that Jesus came from heaven for the sake of salvation? I understand why. So I got to make sure you come on now. And what does it mean? And it means this. Now we're going to go through this thing. Do you believe he became man, 100% man, just like you and I? And why do he have to do that? Come on now. I believe in the Trinity. I preach the Trinity. But sometimes i got to make sure that you really understand that. So what did he do? He became man. He suffered and died. Was buried and rose and ascended to heaven. So that you and I would enjoy heaven down here. Isn't that crazy? And how do you get that preacher? Because Jesus came here 100% man and defeated every common sin known to man. And guess what the Bible said? We become, come on now, little Jesus. We're like him. We don't, we're not going to defeat them all. We ain't perfected like him. But there ought to be some stuff that's falling off of you. There ought to be something that you're not doing anymore. Come on now, don't tell me you believe on it. You love him, you walking with him, you know him, and ain't nothing fell off. 
I'm not putting you in by and say everything, but you ain't got to look back on your life. Oh, oh, come on. All oh, that suffering in it. I died, but I was buried, but then I rose. Ain't that some good stuff? I've been through the same stuff that Jesus went through, the same stuff you went through. Life is real, but I thank you, Lord Jesus, that God is in control. Amen? Amen. What do you want to enjoy? with God? What do you want to enjoy with Jesus? What do you want to enjoy with the Holy Spirit? But I'm going to ask you a question. What do you want to enjoy with God? What do you want to enjoy with Jesus? What do you want to enjoy with the Holy Spirit? But you can't keep telling me that you want to get to heaven and you don't want to enjoy none of the stuff he has here with you. Something is missing. My head hurts because I hear all these folks saying it and yet something is disconnected. And it goes on and says this. <laughs> Do you believe that all your sins, not some of them, but all of them, have been forgiven? Oh, thank you, Jesus. When, when, come, come, guess what I loved last week was so powerful. Because not only did he raise Lazarus from the dead after four days, he said this, and I've missed it for years too, but boy, last week, I'm not, and I've been talking about it all week long. He said, get up, Lazarus, and guess what he told him? And I've been missing that for years. Now, when you get up and come out here, and he said, and take your dead clothes. Take off your dead sin. Take off the stuff that's been holding you back. And that's the beauty of how God works. He didn't just raise you up. Huh? He said, take off your dead clothes and leave them there. And brother, some of you keep saying, God rose you up, and yet you're still walking around in your dead clothes. And then you get mad at me because I look at you and I call you out because you got your dead clothes on because you still got a smell to you and you call them and you get mad because a family member, a friend, a co that called you out because you got your grave clothes on. So don't tell me you got up when he got up and you didn't and he told Lazarus to take off your dead. So if he told Lazarus, he told Don Wayne Smith, he told Trevor, come on now. He told Dick, come on now. He told him, I can walk around here. He said, get on up from your dead state. You was once lost to it. It once had you down, but today is your day. Get up and take off your dead clothes. And somebody want to keep your dead clothes on. But I'm glad when God calls you out, he don't just call you out. He tell you to take off your dead clothes. Ain't that some good news? Ain't that good news? Because some folk would want you to keep your dead stuff on because they want to remind. See, it's a constant reminder. Could you imagine if Lazarus walked around with his dead clothes on yet alive? What folk going to see first? Ah, uh, come on now. What they going to see? They going to see the dead clothes. They going to see that. And brother, sometimes you got to get out of this and realize that God's already covered you. And sometimes you... Before your spouse gets there, before your kids get there, before church people get there, before families get there, before they can get there for the glory, God's already come to you and brought you out. And eventually they're going to get there because they're going to see the manifestation of what God's done in your life. Don't let people help. Don't let people keep your dead clothes on. Amen? Because they will. And at the end, do you believe in that all his grace and righteousness is what's made you, or it's your grace and righteousness. See, some of you got, some of you took his grace and righteousness and turned into yours. And the last time I checked the record when I read this, you don't have any grace and righteousness. It all comes from him. So you better quit trying to get something that you ain't, that you didn't deserve in earth. His grace and righteousness came from him. How do I know? He said, come on now. My grace is sufficient. And then guess what he said about righteousness? I will impute my righteousness into you. So you better know the word of God. So it ain't got nothing to do with you. My grace is sufficient. So his, his grace is going to cover whatever situation you in if you belong to him. And then he said, I can't leave you out here by yourself. So I've got to impute something in you. That means I'm going to put it in you. Because if I don't put it in you, you can't get it. Because it's my righteousness. Because you you don't know anything about my righteousness. All you know is unrighteousness. So now that I understand, that's why I'm sickening. That's why I'm searching. That's why I do what I do. So I need to ask you this one. This is crazy. I was reading something the other day that was so powerful because I can get crazy too. You search the scripture for in them, thank you, have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me. So guess what happened? I was thinking about this the other day in my overflow study, and this was so powerful. So I said this in Sunday school. I mean, said it in Bible study, and many was powerful thought. 
30 men. So when next time someone said the Bible is written by a whole lot of men, and you say, amen, you got that part right. 30 men over a thousand years ago, this is what's powerful about that. 30 men over thousands of years ago came from different backgrounds, different walks of life, and ended at the same place. Come on now. Jesus Christ and him crucified. You can't make this stuff up that no matter what generation, no matter what background, no matter what church affiliation, no matter where you're coming from, if Christ is in it, Christ is in it. Come on now. He that begun a good work in you will continue to the end of the day. Thirty crazy men wrote the Bible and they came to the same conclusion. That's going to put something on your mind. So the next time they try to throw you, white man wrote it, black man wrote it, Hebrew man wrote it, Jew man wrote it, educated man wrote it, uneducated man wrote it, rich man wrote it. See, they all they said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they all came to the same conclusion that Jesus Christ and him crucified. So take your old cell phone out of here and get caught up in your blackness and get caught up in your whiteness and get caught up in your denomination and get caught up in all this other stuff that you want to get caught up in. But the end of the day, if you in it, you're going to come to the conclusion that it's Jesus Christ and him crucified. That the Bible was given by God, and I can't argue with you, the Bible was given by God that these men would come to that conclusion. The next thing is that the real purpose of the Bible is to point people to Christ. So the Bible was written by God. It's to point people to Christ. And then the final thing, and it's to use any other kind of method, is a gross misunderstanding of the Scripture. If you don't believe that God wrote it, if you don't point up to Christ, then any other kind of conclusion is a gross misrepresentation. And that's why Jim Jones of Guyana, come on now, and that's why you have cults. That's why folk get messed up, because they don't know the word of God themselves. They don't know, they don't know God themselves. They, and then they get caught off, and next thing you know, Jim Jones prom promised them something that he couldn't deliver. Only one can give you heaven is Jesus. Ha! Because folk were looking for Jesus, and he told him to give them to Jesus, and they gave him all their money. They gave him, come on now, go back and look at it all. And some of you are looking for the cheap, easy way. Man can't give you something that God already made. Oh, you'll catch that later. Quit trying to get something that man can't give you that God already gave you. He that begun it will continue to the end of the day. Come on now. And some of you can get yourself in a mess. Because you're caught up in man. You're caught up in denomination. You're caught up in church. And I'm praying today that you get caught up in Christ. Amen. 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 And look what he said if we start to close this thing out. Man, a missed gross understanding. If it ain't about God, and it can't point people to Christ, and if they come up with any other interpretation, you better know. If you walk out, you better understand. If it ain't talking about God, if it ain't talking about Christ, it's a misgross. It's a misgross of understanding. I'm telling you, a, a misgross of understanding. I'm telling you, the interpretation of it is so messed up. I want you to understand this. And then he says in 40, but you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. I ask you, this is wild. What's keeping you away from Jesus? That's powerful, isn't it? Yes. What's keeping you away from Jesus? I know what's keeping you away from Jesus. Man-made stuff. Church doctrine. Come on. So I don't get bit out of shape anymore. You know the church doctrine, but you don't know Christ. You know how to call out stuff, but you don't know how to be compassionate. Wow. Ouch. We talked about it last week. Quit calling people out without. If, if you're going to call them out, use the Word of God. <laughs> Don't call them out without using the Word of God because if you call somebody out without using the Word of God, you're creating trouble. You're going to create a mess. They can hear Christ when they can't hear you. But if they just hear you talking about it, it's going to be a mess. What details are you missing from Christ's life? I talk about it in Sunday school. There's three. His life, his death, and his resurrection. 
his life, his death, and his resurrection. And I want to stop out and ask you, what do you know about his life? What do you know about his death? And what do you know about his resurrection? And brother, if you don't learn those three, if you don't learn that, you're going to struggle. You're going to struggle through this life. You're trying to catch all this other stuff. And if you don't understand his life, if you don't understand his death, if you don't understand his resurrection, then you're going to get caught up in so much other stuff because man is walking about to and fro, known as the enemy, to trip you up, to take you off the real thing. And what is the real thing? I'm going to close this thing out. I pray today that you're ready for the scriptures to be opened up to you. What does it mean for the scriptures to be opened up to you? Well, I'm glad you asked. It means this. I, I want you to write this down. Do a study. I didn't realize this. Everybody here knows Psalms what? What Psalms come to mind when I say this? Psalms what? Psalms 23. You didn't realize, you, you will never understand 23 until you understand 22 and 24. Oh, watch out now. Psalms 23, Psalms, I mean Psalms 22, Psalms 23, and Psalms 24. I spent a lot of time in 23 and really didn't understand 22 and 24 until God showed me one day. And it's crazy. Let me tell you about it real quick. It's the portraits of our Lord Jesus Christ, the suffering Savior, the compassion shepherd, the king of kings. And brother, I'm going to be like the Hebrew boy. I can't bow down to Donald Trump. I can't bow down to Biden. I can't bow down to MLK when he was living. I can't bow down to man. I'm not trying to be disrespectful because I already have a king. He might be king to you, but when you already got a king, you're not looking for a king. I've learned to be compassionate because I walk in compassion with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I have to suffer and I told him in Sunday school, you got this thing messed up to think that you're going to be loved when you're walking in truth. That you're going to be loved when you're walking in, uh, in love. I mean, you gonna, you, there's no way for Jesus to have to go through what he went through and you not have to go through something. It's impossible. If you go through and you look at his life, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Father, you told me to love them who despitefully use me. He suffered a heck of a life. Yeah. Even to the point unto death when he said, if it is possible, knowing the answer, that 100% man made him question God. He said, God, I've done everything you've asked me to do. Every sin known to man, I defeated. And you sure you want me to still go on the cross for all these folk? And so that's where the rhetorical question comes in. If this cup could pass, let it pass. And Jesus knew it couldn't pass. He knew it had, he knew. He knew, come on, because he's sitting there. Come on now. And you know the rest of the story. But guess what, brother? Some of you still stuck in your misery. Some of you still stuck in your suffering. Yeah, your mama wasn't there. Yeah, your daddy did you wrong. Yeah, your cousin hurt you. Yeah, this happened. Yeah, this happened. But you forgot the last part. He took death. Death, where is that steam? Come on now. And he rolled with not some power, with all power in my head. And some of you got to get up, take off your gray coat, and realize that you got power. Because Jesus gave you everything you needed to overcome whatever comes your way. Amen. Quit focusing on what you lost right. and realize what God got for you again. Because <laughs> while you worrying about what you lost, you can't see what God's bringing you again. Come on, man. Come on, come on now. Uh, uh, man, I'm telling you, it's crazy. I'm going to give you something real quick. Said the prophetic books. I've always liked the prophetic books. I was reading something. I said, I got to bring this in here. I'm, I'm too, there's no way I can figure this out myself. It said dozens of prophecies concerning the detail of Christ's life death and resurrection. And if you can't see me in the Old Testament, I'm going to point you where you can see him really good. The book of Isaiah. The book of Daniel. The book of Jeremiah. The book of Ezekiel. The book of Hosea. And the book of Zechariah. And brother, you can see him there. You'll see all three pieces of his life. And brother, I'm telling you right now. And some people say, I have a struggle. I understand it is tough. Over there in Genesis, it's tough. But the prophecies aren't tough. And those where you see him clear. Well, go back and say, I'm not going 
going to give you something to have. So I had to go and learn to study to show thyself a fruit, rightly divided. And if you really want to see how he really looks, what you want in the Old Testament, then go to those prophecies and look at him right there. I'll give them to you again. You can write them down. Isaiah, Daniel, Jer come on now, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Hosea, and Zechariah. Come on, brother. And you talk about seeing him crystal clear. It will help you. And what do you need help on? And let's take this thing home. Because I'm praying today that God will take the scriptures and open up a new way for you to look at them. Open my eyes, Lord. I've never seen the scriptures like I'm seeing them now. Lord, change my mindset. I've never read the scripture like I'm reading them now. I'm reading them through your eyes. I'm reading them through your mind. Not my eyes. Not my mind. Because you will always say, I need your eyes, God. I need your mind. I need you to bring clarity down to me so that I can walk right with my family members. So I can walk right with my co-workers. So I can walk right with my church folks. So I can walk right. And they can hold me accountable and I can hold them accountable in your word. Don't you walk out of here trying to hold people accountable to your standards. Because your standards going to change tomorrow. But the standard of Christ is the same today. I mean, yesterday, today, and forevermore. So you know that. So when you don't have nothing to say, it's good to shut your mouth. <laughs> go to Genesis, to Revelation. When your wife get on your nerve, go to Genesis to Revelation. When your husband get on your nerve, go to Genesis to Revelation. When your children get on your nerve, when church folk, when folk get on your nerve, go to the book and see what the book says. And I guarantee you, you have some good medicine for me. May God bless you. May God keep you. I hope and pray that when you walk out of here, you understand the purpose of searching the scriptures now. That it will open up your mind. It will open up your eyes. And you will see it the way Jesus saw.